I'm just going to um, ask Andy, there you are, hey Andy, to come and join me. And Andy's going to share a little bit about himself, about who he is, uh, what he's here to do. And uh, I think you've got a video with all sorts of exciting things, haven't you? Certainly do. <laughs> Certainly do. <laughs> Should we pray for you, Andy? Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, Lord, we just bring Andy into your presence and we just pray your anointing upon him. May his words be your words. May his heart be your heart. Amen. 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 Thank <laughs> you. It's lovely to hear the trumpet, isn't it? Do you like the trumpet? My, my job, I go all over the south of England into different churches, denominations, small, large types of churches. And you know what? You don't hear the trumpet very often. And I was just loving that. That was just fantastic. And also, it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, I've only met Amanda a couple of times. Um, but I have to say, what a quality minister that you've got here. She's not going to like that, but I don't care, because I can come and go, but she is, because I meet pastors and vicars and ministers again all over, and you can see when it's genuine, and it is with Amanda, without a doubt. You've done well there. Um, I'm a local, actually. Um, we live just near uh, Newton Abbott, and I'm a trustee for Ivy Bridge Youth for Christ. So um, thank you for those who support Ivy Bridge Youth for Christ. I'm here with Compassion today, but just got to say, big plug, great organization. Um, and they're doing some fantastic work right on our doorstep, on your doorstep here. Um, so um, I've got two plugs in today. There's the first one. Um, so Compassion, um, thank you for those who, who do support um, supporters. Don't know if this is going to work. Let's see. There we go. Just for those who don't know, I know a number of people here do support um, our children. We deal with children who live on in extreme poverty, under about a pound 40 a day. Um, so when COVID hit the majority world, um, there's no furlough scheme in the majority world in the 25 countries we deal in. So no, but there was no kind of benefit system that caught the families when they stopped work because the world stopped, didn't it? Could you ever predict that? Um, our children were in absolute crisis, but the, the ones who were supported by you um, were, were continue to be supported through COVID. But actually, um, COVID has led to another 150 million children in extreme poverty. There's now about 500 million. We were winning the battle against extreme poverty until COVID, so it's been a tough time. Um, so like I say, I really appreciate those who support. Our core values are that we are Christ-centered, church-based, and child-focused. So that's what we're about. We're very much gospel um, and, and very focused on that. And we deal with the mind, the body, um, the spirit, and the heart, or the soul, if you like. So if you sponsor a child for £28 a month, th that child gets medical care, gets food, gets teaching, um, gets literacy, gets paid to go to school in, in the sense of the school fees, um, but also gets tr discipled on a, on a Saturday. So I think a group of you guys went out, didn't you, to your project. Can you put your hand up? Give me a wave if you went. Thank you so much. It's, that's absolutely tremendous. And ask these people what it's like. On the Saturday, the children come in and they get a Bible study using Bible Society materials, discipled as well as literacy and other things. So for £28 a month, over here you can get a takeaway and a half. In London, not even a half of a takeaway, so when I speak in London, um, or a mobile phone contract. For that kind of level of money, uh, an entire child and their family are supported. So the child is supported, but also the benefits go, the medical benefits go to the rest of the family as well. So you change um, one child's life, you're changing the family's life, and actually put a few of them together as you've done, and you're changing a village. And you, isn't that awesome? People want to make a difference post-COVID. That's what I've noted. People are saying, I don't know about church. Actually, a lot of people haven't come back to church. 60% are back, but 36 to 40% haven't. And a lot of those are because they think it doesn't make a difference. I believe they're wrong, but I can understand that. 
People say, I want to make a difference. Well, if you're sponsoring a child, or if you do today, you will absolutely make a difference. And you can see the, um, the details of your project um, in Kenya. And we've got another five children or six children today. Um, Anne gives a wave, Anne. Um, Anne's got some profiles there if it, at the end when I preach. If, you want, if you're interested in having a look, she'll pop one in your hand. Um, we've got a few children from around the world as well. Um, so actually, there's just a few stats there. I'm not going to read them out, but it's, it's interesting to just see, especially the first one, in terms of basic sanitation in Kenya, 70% of children don't have basic sanitation. Now, that should offend us as Christians. That's not God's best, is it? Extreme poverty is an evil that we've got to, cha we've got to challenge. And I'm a great believer in Ivy Bridge Youth for Christ and challenging poverty on our doorstep spiritually and physically, but I'm also about reaching out to the ends of the earth. And that's what compassion um, does. Just a few pictures there of the kids, so you can see that. Um, sort of a, a house, if you like, their typical house in Kenya and what it looks like, often mud floors and um, very, very basic sanitation. Uh, it's not an, um, an easy place to live. Grass and thatch roofs. So they're all the children that you sponsor or have sponsored. Maybe some people, are, if you're online or streaming, you might be sponsoring too. Um, but there's a lot of children that you've sponsored in Ivy Bridge Methodist Church over the years. Isn't that great? I think that's absolutely tremendous. Um, and if you haven't seen it, I always give a big plug for the app. Um, can you give me a wave if you've used our app ever? A few of you, brilliant. Please use it, it's a game changer. So rather than just saying, here's my 28 pounds a month, job done, done my charity giving, um, I'm not inspired by that at all. I'm not. The app is incredible. You can find out about what to pray for for your child. You can send a direct gift, a letter, photos. You can find out about the church project and it's all on there. So please um, download that. I'll show you later on the table. We've got a little table at the front there if you're, if you're interested. Um, so actually, there's some figures there about what your impact has been. Now, admittedly, some of the people may not still be here in the church because of COVID. They may not have returned. But the influence, look at that influence that you've had over the, uh, since the start of the project. Um, that, is, that is a really significant influence of Ivy Bridge Methodist Church, isn't it? This is local church to the ends of the earth. And everyone says, oh, what's the church? It's boring, it's untrue, it's irrelevant. Really? That is irrelevant? I don't think so. It's incredible what the church is doing, and we need to celebrate that. Uh, you know, we get downtrodden, don't we? You get downbeaten. It's gone, what's the point in the church? It's outdated. That's not outdated. That's now. Actually, this year, with all the supporters, you've given 20,000 pounds around the world. Praise God for that, and we thank you. And the letters um, given or seen by the children, and you can see the letters sent by the sponsors. Who's winning? <laughs> so I used to be a teacher. They, they do that, don't they? It'd be great if you wrote a letter, or maybe on that app, because the children love it when they hear from you. Just send them a blessing. Send them a prayer. Say we're praying for you. Send them a scripture. Um, it really makes a big difference to them. So you see most of your children are actually in primary and secondary school now, uh, rather than the early years. Um, by the way, the project goes through to 22, um, even post-school, so we make sure they've got trained up and ready with a skill for the rest of life. It's a tremendous project. And also, if you're on the, the live stream, and hopefully Amanda will drop that QR code into maybe a Facebook page or something. So there's a few children, if you can't uh, sponsor physically today, you could use the QR code, um, and it will, it will link to this church. So um, I'm going to be bringing a, a message later on from Scripture, but I'm just going to leave you for this first part um, with uh, a short video. So I'm about to go and meet my sponsor child that I've been sponsoring through Compassion uh, for about three or four years now. His name's Wilfred, uh, and I'm just so excited to meet him in person. Hey, 
you doing all right? Oh, good man. Nice to meet you, Alfred. Jambo. As a father in the UK, there's never been any doubt in my mind about my kids having a chance at education. There's no doubt in my mind about them receiving good health care if and when they need it. Perhaps selfishly, I live with that expectancy and assurance. Yet, for Wilfred's father, good health and education were his biggest dreams for his son. Before compassion, school fees and lack of access to medical care made those dreams impossible. But through compassion and the local church, this has been made possible for Wilfred and his family. I had the joy today of giving Wilfred a football as a gift. As an 11 year old lad, this is perhaps the first football that he's ever received. As I played with him, it turns out he was better than me. As we entered the project today, we were greeted with a song and dance by the children. They sang with such joy, made us feel so welcome, and the place was just full of life. Wilfred told me yesterday that he has dreams of becoming a policeman. Poverty tells children like Wilfred that those dreams are impossible and will never become a reality. But through the work of compassion in the local church, people like me and you can give these children and their families a hope and a future.